Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday, September 8th. We're continuing to track Hurricane Lee to the east of the Caribbean. We'll track to the north of the islands over the next several days, and then eventually we'll turn north over the western Atlantic over the next 7 to 10 days, and we'll be watching it for some time yet. We also have Tropical Storm Margo over the eastern Atlantic, uh, but this will stay out over the open ocean over the next week and will be a threat only to shipping. We're going to take a close look at Hurricane Lee now. This is the Enhanced Infrared Loop, and we've seen quite an impressive change since our last video two days ago on Wednesday. We now have a mature major hurricane. This is now a Category 4. Amazingly, it intensified from a tropical storm uh, from our last video to a Category 5 hurricane in about 24 hours. And last night reached winds of 160 miles per hour after an extreme bout of rapid intensification. It's actually weaker now at category four. And you can see that the eye is cloud filling and there's some raggedness and pulsing to the ring of thunderstorms making up the eye wall. And this is due to some moderate westerly shear, which was actually a little under forecast by models. And it's a little, little bit more shear than was anticipated a few days ago, uh, about 20 knots of westerly shear. And you can kind of pick that out if you look at some of these cirrus elements to the west of the hurricane moving out of the south there's southerly flow aloft. And a reminder of how shear works, you'll note that you know the hurricane is moving uh, toward the northwest, and so that implies that the, the low level flow is kind of like this, but the upper level flow is out of the south. And the way that works is if you draw a vector from the tip of the low level wind to the tip of the upper level wind, you get a westerly vector. So the total shear is westerly at about 20 knots. We can see that on the GFS which if you take an area average sounding around the vortex, if we go actually back to the analysis here, you'll see that the maximum shear is in fact westerly at about 20 knots. And you can see in the hodograph, if you draw a vector from the origin to the low level flow out of the east southeast, like we said, and then a vector to the upper level flow uh, in the 300 millibar layer, somewhere around there, and you get a vector that is roughly out of the west. Similar concept. This is expected to persist for a couple of days, and we'll see it drop off by the time we get to about two and a half days. You'll see these values change from orange to green. Light shear here under 10 knots is expected in a couple of days. And this is Puerto Rico on the thumbnail, so the hurricane is still only just now at that point passing north of the Lesser Antilles. So we may yet see Lee try to make another run at Cat 5 intensity or, or make a secondary strong peak, and it could be at its strongest while it's north of the Caribbean. This will be mostly just a curiosity because we're not expecting direct land impacts from Lee other than dangerous beach conditions and high surf across most of this part of the world. Usually when big hurricanes like this are traveling across the ocean, they may be far from land, uh, but the entire U.S. Eastern Seaboard, Bahamas, and Caribbean will get uh, strong big waves, rip currents, high surf from this hurricane radiating outward <clears throat> as it tracks over the open ocean. This is the recon data from today just to show that this is indeed very strong pressure down in the 940s. It had been below 930 millibars yesterday, so it's risen a bit, indicating some of that weakening. Max winds now at category 4 strength, not category 5, but it is pretty steady at the moment, not really going up or down in strength, at least as of the recon flight a couple of hours ago. This is a microwave pass showing the thunderstorm structure of the system. You can see a very strong and complete eye wall. So the inner core is healthy, but you can see most of the banding is now to the east and north of the center, indicating that westerly shear, pushing it off to that side. Typical structure, something we expect. And worth noting that Lee could undergo fluctuations in intensity, not just due to wind shear changes, but due to internal dynamics as well. Uh, major hurricanes tend to have eyewall replacement cycles periodically where you get secondary eyewalls. Bands like this may close off around the primary eyewall and form a double eyewall structure. Not seeing strong signs of that today, but it could happen at any time, and they are fairly difficult to predict more than about 12 or 24 hours in advance. This is the GFS uh, 500 millibar mid-level steering flow, just to start talking about the track forecast here. And again, Lee is expected to pass north of the Caribbean islands. We have a ridge to its north, so this is steering the hurricane toward the west-northwest and eventually maybe a little bit of a bend westward as it passes north of Puerto Rico. So you might see it do this and then come toward the west a little bit. And then what you'll see happens is as the hurricane comes over, you know, we do have this big ridge showing up here, and so it makes it look like the hurricane will just continue westward. But we do have troughing over the eastern seaboard, and that's likely to deepen as we get toward the day five point. So we'll see Lee maybe take a little bit of a bend west right about there. And then eventually we're gonna see another turn because there's a trough kind of at the 
northern side of your screen that comes over the central and eastern U.S. and over the Appalachians and erodes this ridge. So the ridge kind of pinches off and you get a high centered over here. And you can see this trough coming in and imposing southwesterly flow off of the southeastern U.S. That's going to deflect and turn the hurricane northward around the western periphery of, periphery of this ridge here. So we are going to see a turn of some sort. But this is a five-day forecast. You can see where it is. And then we still have many days after this to watch it make its move north. So exactly where and how quickly this turn occurs is still a source of uncertainty. But in this kind of a pattern with all this troughing in the subtropical jet over the North Gulf Coast, this will deflect away from the southeastern U.S. So this is not going to drive straight west into the Bahamas and Florida and the Gulf of Mexico. As we talked about on Wednesday, that logic remains sound. That is not the expectation. So although you might see the National Hurricane Center forecast track pointed toward this area, that doesn't mean it will continue to move that direction. We are expecting a turn. However, there still could be land impacts down the road. For example, Bermuda's right here. So the timing and location of this turn, very important for this island. And the thing about hurricanes like Lee is as they begin to turn northward, their wind fields typically grow in size. So as this comes north, this will be a rather large circulation with a large area of tropical storm force winds and hazardous conditions. So Bermuda, even right here to the east of the hurricane, could still have adverse effects even if the core of the hurricane misses the island. So we'll be watching for that, but it's still about six, maybe even seven days away, depending on the speed of the hurricane. Now let's look at a bigger view here. This is the 500 millibar height and anomaly in coloring, just a different way of viewing uh, the mid-level flow. And uh, out to five days, you'll see uh, Lee here. And again, this big trough comes over the Great Lakes and translates over. This has become a consensus forecast for this trough to exist in about five days. And if we look at the ensemble trend, so the trend in the last two days of model runs shows that in blue, heights have lowered over the Great Lakes in general. So this trough has been getting stronger and more consistent on the ensemble mean for the last couple of days. And you can see the opposite over southeastern Canada. This ridge has become stronger and more established and more consistent in the ensemble uh, for this five day forecast. So this trough ridge couplet uh, will be there according to current expectations. And then you can see the shape of this ridge near an east of Bermuda right here will guide the hurricane northward around its western periphery. And exactly how it's guided and how that turn toward the north and the northeast occurs will determine whether we see impacts to Canada and maybe even the New England area part of the United States. We've seen a bit of fuzziness in this forecast, and that's not surprising considering we're going to get out beyond five, six, seven days here. If we go forward on the ensemble, you'll see that the hurricane generally gets carried northward, and then we have uncertainty in the shape of the ridge and what the troughing is doing over southeastern Canada. So if we look at the cloud of possible locations from the ensemble, the distribution of possible futures has something like this uh, in about seven days. So very early next Friday morning, here's Bermuda right here. So most of the tracks just west of Bermuda, but you can see they defer a lot in forward speed. Some of these members are moving very slowly toward the northwest before finally making their turn. Other members are racing northward more quickly, and this will depend on how quickly that trough digs in over the Great Lakes and comes down and grabs this hurricane, how quickly it erodes the ridge and allows this turn. One of the things to keep in mind here is that this trough will eventually be lifting out. And so as that happens, it will reshape the edge of this ridge and where the hurricane is relative to the timing of that trough leaving will matter a lot. For example, if the trough lifts out really quickly, this ridge could bulge in back behind it and force the hurricane a little bit farther west, perhaps threatening southeast Canada and maybe New England. If the trough exits uh, a little bit more slowly, it could erode this edge of the ridge just in time to direct the hurricane northeastward, maybe even avoiding Nova Scotia and then perhaps impacting Newfoundland or maybe even staying out to sea entirely, which would be nice. And if the trough exits a little more slowly, that could also bring the hurricane up a little bit farther north. So the timing here will be very, very important. And again, uncertainty at this forecast range a week or more in advance, that's normal. So we normally don't expect to have a confident forecast seven days out. And that remains the case here. Also worth noting that uh, Margot 
is kind of involved sitting here in the central Atlantic will help to define how strong and where this ridge is amplifying southeast of Canada. So that could be a little bit of a fly in the ointment as well that's difficult to predict. So if we look at the NHC five day forecast, a reminder of how far out you know we're looking. The, the NHC only makes forecasts out to five days for a reason, and five days out only gets us that far. It's east of the Bahamas, south of Bermuda. It doesn't even fully show this turn toward the north, but again, don't extrapolate this motion out toward the southeastern US. You guys are gonna be fine in a pattern like this. We may have to watch for the southeast Bahamas and Turks and Caicos just in case we see a little bit of a slower track that nudges in here before making the turn. That could cause adverse impacts in this part of the world. So we'll keep an eye on that as we still have a few days before the hurricane gets close. But again, high surf will be occurring all over this area regardless. And then we'll keep an eye on Bermuda, perhaps seven days, six, six or seven days before this could get close to Bermuda, depending on how quickly it makes that turn. Right now, most models are just west of Bermuda, but it's certainly well within the envelope of possibilities that Bermuda could see a strike if the turn occurs a little bit farther to the east. So we'll be keeping an eye on that very carefully over the next several days. That's about it for this video. We'll continue to watch Lee as it makes its big turn. Many days yet to watch this one. Again, Margo, not a threat to land, and we'll hope Lee is not as well, uh, but we'll see over the next several days. Again, high surf, big waves, dangerous beach conditions all along the western part of the Atlantic Basin will occur either way. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.